What's up everyone? In this issue of Motive Garage, we've got our Porsche on the dyno to test some intake mods to see if we can increase the power and make some better noises. Now, if you know anything about playing with cars, you know that modifying turbocharged vehicles is actually pretty easy. Heaps of power to be had with just basic mods, but making more power with a naturally aspirated car is way more difficult. And when it comes to high-end Euros, supercars and exotics, it's even more difficult again. Why? Well, they're just so good from factory and you can't just simply turn up the boost. So what we're going to do with our Porsche 997, we're going to test a bunch of intake mods that all have claimed horsepower increases but for us it's not just about that we also want to make it sound better as well now we've decided to bring the Porsche to mainline dyno in New South Wales we're at their head office where they actually build and test all of their dynos before they get shipped out now the reason we've decided to bring it here is well simply we can leave it here all day do all of the parts back to back on the same day with the same temperature and the same conditions now we've chosen to use one of their pro hub dynos for a few reasons firstly super consistent as there's no wheel spin there's no variation in tires them getting hot or strapping the car down and secondly we can also plug in the obd2 port into the porsche and we can read intake air temperature we can read timing and we've got air fuel ratio in the car so as we do the tests we can actually look to make sure that we have consistent intake air temps for each comparison so we know that we have correct data and if we do have any loss or gain in power for each mod we can also look at the reasons why by having all of this logging and information available to us so first up we're going to do three runs back to back cars already warm let's see what it starts with <laughs> The first modification we're going to do to our Porsche is install a K&N replacement panel filter. Now this is pretty much the easiest mod you can do to most cars. On many cars you simply unclip the top of the airbox and you can install it in 30 seconds. But being a typical Euro and expensive high-end car, of course it's not that simple in a Porsche. We have to remove the entire airbox so we can install this. So it's more like a 20 minute job. So we'll get it in and then we'll do three runs back to back again and see whether or not this thing flows more or if that extra flow actually results in any more horsepower. And what we mean by that is if the factory air filter isn't a restriction, well, no matter how good this is, it wouldn't really matter. So let's find out. So we did a couple of warm up runs once we installed the filter before we did our three runs back to back and the reason we did that is when the car sits here heat soak goes through the engine and the intake air temperature sensor gets a higher reading when you first start the car and it needs two runs to stabilize the intake air temp back down so it was 56 degrees when we first started the car up but by the time we'd done two runs it had stabilized at 33 degrees the ECU had done a bit of learning put the ignition timing back to where it should be and then we got the power where it should be. So after installing the k and panel filter, we saw a best of 199.6. Let's call it average of 199. So essentially we've picked up two and a half kilowatts or four horsepower at the back hubs just by changing a panel filter. Will we fill that out on the road? Eh, maybe, maybe not, but hey, if you've got to replace your air filter sometimes anyway, you might as well put something in that gives you some extra grunt.
The next part that we're installing has got me pretty uh, curious. It's the IPD or Innovative Plenum Designs Inlet Manifold. Now on NA cars it's pretty hard to make more power uh, and they're claiming about 15 to 25 horsepower depending which model of car you put this into. So pretty keen to see if it works. It's not like other things I've seen. If you have a look inside essentially rather than just be a T block it's sort of a Y piece design inside. Separates the air more smoothly. It's dimpled like a golf ball. We've all heard about how a golf ball being dimpled makes it go through the air better. Well they've decided to put that idea inside this inlet manifold. Um, pretty curious to see if it works. It's probably the hardest thing we have to install today, but shouldn't be too hard. Let's find out. Let's do it. Now we've installed the IPD inlet manifold and the next thing we have to install to go with it is this. The larger Porsche GT3 throttle body, 82 millimetres versus the factory one at 74 millimetres. Now the IPD inlet manifold is made specifically to work with this, so you can't mix and match and do one without the other. Now the great thing about these throttle bodies, they are made by Bosch Motorsport, so pretty easy to get and not too expensive actually. The other thing you have to take into consideration when you install all of this is that the flange for the throttle body is bigger. So IPD can provide you with one of these, a silicon pipe that is larger at one end to suit that throttle body and then goes onto the factory air box at the other end. The other thing they give you is this, a resonator delete which goes onto here. Uh, hopefully that'll give us some better noises to go with hopefully some extra power. Let's get it on, finish it up, test it, let's do it. this round of testing we did a lot more runs because we wanted to give the car a chance to learn and adjust for the new modifications but it did exactly what it did the last couple of dyno runs. The first run read low because the intake air temps were higher from heat soak and then after that it adjusted the ignition timing to suit the intake air temperature. Pretty much every run's had 33 or 34 degrees intake air temps. They've been kept mega consistent. The room's been the same temperature pretty much all day within a degree. So we've got the most consistent factors you can possibly have for a dyno test. And the results are in the IPD inlet manifold, GT3 throttle body and intake pipe made all of well, pretty much nothing, maybe one and a half horsepower. Um, our highest run before we put it on was 203.0. The highest here was 203.2. The average might have been a, a horsepower higher, essentially nothing. Um, the only plus is it sounds a lot better, but you could also do that simply by just buying a $9 plastic plug to block off the resonator to give you that throatier sound. So a um, bit disappointed to be brutally honest, but it is what it is. Is our car a dud? Dunno. Does it work on other Porsche models? Maybe, but on a 997 automatic 3.6 litre? Nothing. The last part we want to test on our Porsche is a complete K&N intake kit, which consists of an intake pipe, an air filter, and a air box to try and get some cool air into it. Looking at the kit, good quality. Uh, we've already dummy assembled it into the car once and make sure it all fits so we can get it on quickly here on the dyno. I will say this, Looking at the pipe, it's, there isn't any restriction in the factory one. Um, this is longer. <sighs> Will this filter flow more than the panel filter? Probably, but does it need to? That's the big question. So um, I don't know how this will make more power or if it will, but I guess there's only one way to find out. I do know this though, from videos I've seen on the internet, certainly sounds pretty damn good. So let's get it on, find out. Before we talk about results, I will say this. The K&N intake kit sounds epic. The noise is glorious. It makes this thing sound more like a GT3 car than a base Carrera. I would buy that intake kit alone just for the noise, as long as the horsepower is the same. But that's the problem. The horsepower isn't the same. I know that a K&N intake kit should gain power, but in our case, it's lost power. Now, before you hit the internet keyboards and start talking about it, 
Because of all the logging we're able to do on the mainline dyno, we can actually work out why it lost power, which is just as important as the power itself. Basically, with the K&N intake kit on, it's starting to lose power from as early as 3,000 RPM, and pretty much everywhere from sort of 5,500 RPM onwards, it has lost 10 kilowatts, or about 14 or 15 horsepower. And that's a lot, I think, in a car of this power and will be noticeable on the road. Now, like I said, if it was the same, eh, sounds good, leave it. But let's take a look at some of the other logging to see why it's lost that power. Most importantly, air fuel ratio has dropped an entire point. So where it was 11.85, it's now 11.0. There are other parts where it's gone from 11.6 down to 10.6. That's a massive fattening up of the fuel curve and will rob a natural aspirated car of a fair bit of power. I mean, that's relatively rich factory, so to be in the mid 10s or high 10s in AFR, that's gonna rob some power. Uh, the next one is intake air temperature. We had consistent 33 to 34 degrees all of the time on this car. Average of five runs, 33 degrees, nice and flat. Because this has a sealed intake, from the air box to the deck of the, the boot lid, you just, the intake air temperature stayed consistent. When we put the k &N on, we've still got some air coming in through there, but the, the, the air filter is exposed in the engine bay. So instead of having 33 degrees, we had 39 degrees intake air temp. Um, that's a lot, that's some more power again. And then the other thing we also noticed that is the ignition timing has been retarded by at least a degree through most of the rev range. So when you got more fuel, less timing and hotter intake air, you're just gonna lose power, it's just physics. Can we get that power back with tuning? Maybe, if we bring the air fuel ratio back up a point, maybe that will then outweigh the increase in intake air temperature, we bring the timing back. But as a bolt-on item, the k and intake hasn't worked, but will it work if we do some aftermarket custom tuning? That's the big question. In fact, my big question is, will aftermarket tuning make all of these parts work together as a package when at the moment, they essentially don't. So really what that's telling us overall is we already knew natural aspirated cars were hard to make more power, but what it's telling us specifically for the 3.6 litre flat six Porsche, there is no restriction from this inlet manifold all the way back to where the intake joins onto the deck lid. There's no restriction. And if there's no restriction anywhere, then changing things isn't gonna make any more power. It's just physics. All you're doing is messing with what German engineers have done. So. Now since doing the dyno testing, we decided to do some further diagnosis on our Porsche to see if there was anything wrong with the car and anything wrong at our end, because the parts manufacturers at least deserve that before we finalise all of our results. Now before we modified the car's intake system, we did actually run the Porsche down the quarter mile, completely standard except for the aftermarket 19 inch wheels. Now we didn't use any launch control, there wasn't a bunch of practice runs, it was just literally tromp the throttle and go, and this is how our first attempt went. Now I looked all over the internet for performance figures on a Tiptronic 997 model Porsche and well, couldn't find any. So we'll let you guys, the viewers and the Porsche fans, tell us if you think the performance of the car is within spec. But we will say this, we did find quarter mile times for a manual being anywhere from 12.8 to 13.2 uh, and also the zero to 60 times for Tiptronic versus manual that the Tiptronic was four tenths slower. So if you add four to five tenths on top of the quarter mile times that we found for the manual, you'll find that our numbers, well, we reckon they're pretty spot on. Now, the next thing we spoke to other Porsche experts and IPD about was performing a hard reset on the ECU and calibrating the throttle body. We did both of those on this car, and then we talked about whether or not the ECU needed to learn. So, what's the best thing to do? Heh, go do some hard driving in the car, which is exactly what we did. We took it to Power Cruise for a weekend and had some fun out on track, did a little bit of racing with it as well, and we used it as an excuse to find some of our favourite roads and take the Porsche for some hard driving. So after a couple of weeks of hard driving with the Porsche, I'm going to be honest, I felt zero difference 
through the seat of the pants. Doesn't mean there wasn't any difference on the dyno, but essentially not enough to make it worth a visit back. Now we've had some companies suggest to us perhaps the age of the engine is an issue, but I can't see why. Um, we've also had suggested to us that the exhaust is blocked up uh, and maybe mucking with the tune. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to put the stock inlet and intake pipe, etc., back on the car. I'm going to go do some exhaust and catalytic converter modifications. Essentially, we're going to put test pipes on and see if removing the muffler or removing the catalytic converter in the system makes any difference to power whatsoever. And if it does or it doesn't, we'll then go and retest all of the intake mods again and see whether they work after we do those things. But um, to be honest with you, our, we're just of the opinion that the 3.6 litre uses the same intake as the 3.8 litre as far as we're aware, and the 3.8 litre makes more power, so therefore the intake flows enough already. Is that right or wrong? Well, we're going to keep trying to find out, so stay tuned for our next project car feature on the Porsche.